Hey everyone, I'm Jo from Country Cow Designs. Welcome back to my channel. In this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make the Toulouse 2.0. So this is the second in my Toulouse series. And the idea of this series of bags is that they are cheap sewing patterns. So they're discounted compared to my normal, normal patterns. And they're designed to like introduce you to some new skills. So this bag is quite different to the first, especially because it's got an oval bottom. So I wouldn't call this like a beginner sewing pattern, but I know lots of beginners are still going to give it a go. And the instructions through the pattern are designed to be like really, really clear to help you through them. You'll learn some like really, really good skills, new skills maybe for bag making. So that's that's like the whole idea behind these patterns. So it's it's a small crossbody. That's where it's similar to the first one. It's a similar sort of size. It's got a nice little front zip pocket. Um, and on the back, it's got a slip pocket. So just to give you an idea of size, these um, sunglasses fit right in there. And then on the top, it closes with a zip closure. So I know that was something that everybody really, really wanted from the first Toulouse pattern. So I made sure this one had a zip closure. This is an iPhone 8. So it gives you a kind of idea of size. And then inside, we've just got another zipper pocket in there. And it's got an adjustable crossbody strap too. So I think that's just about everything. I hope you enjoy the video tutorial. Just let me know if you've got any questions whatsoever. Uh, of course, you can just watch me sew if you want to, but if you actually want to join in and make the bag yourself, you'll need to buy the sewing pattern. So that's available from countrycowdesigns.com for two pounds. So I hope you enjoy the tutorial. So for this tutorial, for the exterior, I'm using two fabrics. I've got this Rifle Paper Co Cotton that I've interfaced already. Then I've got a natural cork. And for my zips, I'm using a yellow zipper tape. Then for my lining, I've got a navy waterproof canvas. So this is a light waterproof canvas. It's 300 denier, which is just really nice for linings. I'm using Styleville foam, sewing foam for my stabilizer. And then I've got antique brass hardware to go with that. So I'll make a note in the video description of where I got all my supplies in case anyone's wondering. And for my interfacing, for my cotton, I've been using um, Vylene G700, which is basically the same as um, Shapeflex SF101 or anything like that. It's just a medium weight woven interfacing. So for step one, you're going to need your two cotton pieces for your crossbody strap and your cork or vinyl crossbody strap piece. You're also going to need your hardware. So you're going to need two swivel clasps, two D rings and your slider. And lastly, you're going to need your two crossbody tabs. So we'll make a start with the crossbody tabs. And the first thing that you need to do is mark them down the centers. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold these long edges into that center line and I'm going to take this over to the iron and give it a good press. So this is how they should both look once they're pressed in. Now, when I'm marking my fabrics, I use a friction pen from Pilot because this erases with heat, um, but you do still need to be careful with these, especially if you're marking the outside of the fabric. Although the mark comes off, sometimes they can leave like a little white sort of scratch mark almost. Um, so just be really cautious with those. You could use something like Taylor's chalk instead if you prefer, but whatever marking tool you're using, Make sure that you test it on a scrap piece of fabric before you start, because I have ruined projects in the past by using the wrong sort of marker. So now that those are both folded in there, what we're going to do is top stitch both edges with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now those are top stitched, I'm just going to separate them. I just find it easier to sew them together like that. And now you want to put this through a D-ring. So just pop the D-ring on there and make sure that you've got the wrong side on the inside. And just click that together. 
do that with both of these. And then what we're going to do is we're going to baste the bottom just to hold it together. So I'm just, I'm just going to sew the bottom um, just with eighth of an inch, something like that. Seam allowance doesn't really matter, um, just to hold it together at the bottom. Okay, once those are done, just slide them aside for later and grab your two cotton pieces for your strap. So what we want to do is join these together. So you want one of them right side up like this and place the second one right side down. So you just want to make sure that it's night, night, nice and neat on this corner just here. And I'll just clip that into place. So we need to mark it from this corner here to that one there. Okay, so we're just going to sew through this and just make sure that you backstitch well at the beginning and the end. Now we just want to trim down that seam allowance. So you just want to have it at roughly half an inch. And I'm going to take this over to the iron and I'm going to press that open with the iron. So this is how your strap should now look on the cotton part. Now, if for any reason it doesn't line up absolutely perfect, don't worry because this is going to be folded in, so no one's ever going to see it. If it's really badly lined up, then yeah, you're going to want to fix it. But you might notice there that mine's not quite perfect. It's just not a problem. Don't worry about it. So the next thing you need to do, you're probably going to notice that I, I write the length of the pieces on so I know what to cut for the next one. Um, so just ignore that. What, what we need to do is we need to draw a line down the centre of this cotton strap. So you just want to draw that one inch in, right down the centre. Okay, so once you've done that, you're going to do the same as you did with your crossbody tabs and just fold that into the center line from each side. So we're gonna fold it, both edges into that center line. Do that along the whole strap, and I'm gonna use an iron to press mine to hold it in place. So this is what the cotton part of your strap is gonna look like now that it's all folded in. Now this should be about 60 and a half inches long now that it's joined together. So just set that aside and grab your cork or vinyl piece. Now if you want to you can do this side from cotton as well um, but it just gives like a really nice sturdy finish to a strap having cork or vinyl because it's waterproof and mark proof so it's really nice to have that as like the wear side of the strap that's on your arm. So you're just going to do the exact same thing. Mark it down the centre along the whole length and then we're going to fold these two edges in but I'm going to use double sided tape to hold this in place because I don't want to use that much heat on my cork. I don't generally use heat, and I especially don't use cork uh, steam on cork or vinyl, just because you can damage the fabric. If you do need to use heat, just check it on an off cut before you start. Uh, but for me, I'm gonna use some double-sided tape to hold these two long edges in the center. Okay, so this is what your cork or vinyl strap is now going to look like. Now you're supposed to leave the last one inch unstuck, which I forgot to do. So just peel it back like I have for the last inch or so. If you're using double sided tape like me, um, just make sure it's the type of tape that you can sew through because some tapes will gum up your needle. So I'll put in the, in the description where I got mine from if you um, want to check that out. Otherwise, you could use something like Fabri-Tac glue by Beacon. That works well as well. So grab your cotton strap and you want to put these right sides together. Now this is where it's best if you haven't put the tape right to the end like I did. So I'm just going to peel mine back because although you can sew through it um, when it's hidden inside, you don't want to sew through it when it's on top because your press of it will just stick to it. Okay, so just clip those right sides together.
There you go. I'm just going to sew through that with a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so once those are sewn together, you just want to pull them out and you might want to use a bit of double sided tape or something just to hold this up. But what we're going to do is we're going to fold these again into the centre line, but you want your seams to be over on the cotton side. Okay, and then you're going to put your one of your swivel clasps on to that seam. So pop it on from the other end and make sure that your swivel clasp, like the clasp bit, is going to be on the right side of the cork like this. Okay, and we want this seam to be pretty much on top of the swivel clasp. So it's sort of on the top here. And then just clip that in place. So you might just need to take a minute or two just to really make sure that's nice and neat and everything's folded in nice and neatly. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip these two layers together all of the way down the strap. So I'm just going to keep clipping these together all the way until we get a few inches from the end. I'm just going to leave like this much on the end unclipped. Now when you're doing this you want to make sure that this cotton layer is nice and tight so as you're doing it just sort of almost sort of stretch the cotton make sure that it's nice and tight on top of the cork or the vinyl because the cotton will stretch just a tiny bit when you're sewing it and you don't want to end up with more cotton on top than you do with the cork on the bottom. So what you can do is sort of pull it into place, stretch it into place now, and then when you're sewing it, it won't stretch. Okay, so now that you've reached near the end, what you want to do is you'll, you'll notice that your cotton is considerably longer. That's fine. That's how it's supposed to be. You want to, again, place them right sides together. Now, if like me, you've got double sided tape in because you weren't paying attention, um, just try to remove that from that last one inch so it doesn't get stuck under your presser foot. Okay. So place those right sides together like that and clip them into place again. And we're just going to sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance, same as we did before. Now that's sewn together, we're going to do the same thing as before. And we're going to fold both edges in to the centre. So make sure again that your seams are pointing toward your cotton. And I'm just going to use some clips to hold this in place for a minute. Okay, and then just finish off clipping the rest of this strap together. Okay, so this is how your strap should be looking. Don't panic about the fact that your cotton is longer. It's supposed to be that way. That means that later on when we sew this down, there's a lot less bulk for us to sew through. So now that that's all clipped into place, we're going to sew all four edges. When we get to the clasp, we're going to get as close as we possibly can to that clasp. I'm going to use a hump jumper or bulky seam made, as they're sometimes called, to lift up my presser foot so I can get as close as possible. Then I'm going to sew a couple of extra lines down the centre. 
So I would recommend sewing from whichever side is going to be on top. So for me, I like to have the cork actually on my shoulder so that that's getting the most wear and because it's waterproof and stain proof, it's quite, you know, it's not going to get stained easily. Um, that's ideal. So I'm going to sew from the cotton side because that's the side that's going to be on top and on show. And the reason that I sew from the top with my straps is just because the top is always ever so slightly neater. That is just the way that I seem to find it. Um, I'm not sure why, but my top stitch always comes out slightly neater on the top edge. So that's why I decided to do it that way. Right, so once that's all sewn together, grab your hardware because we're going to fit that now. So you will need your second swivel clasp and your slider. Now I was going to use a standard size slider, but I think this strap is gonna to be too thick. So I've got a thick strap slider instead. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is pop this over the middle bar. So this is the same no matter what size your slider is. I know this looks quite different, but it is essentially the exact same thing as this. It's just that the middle bar doesn't move. So I'm going to pop that over the slider. Then I'm going to put it through the swivel clasp and make sure that the hook side is on top because it's going to end up like that. OK, and then take this end and we need to put it back through back through this slider over the middle bar. Okay, so I've got almost all of the cotton on this side. I've just, I've left a little bit there. Now, you need to clip this together and just double check that you have done this correctly before you sew it. Sometimes I get it wrong. Okay, so you just want to check that your swivel clasp is correct and that when you slide this, that it moves freely, then you know that you've got this fitted correctly. So what we're gonna do is we're going to sew a box here and then do an X. And because this, is, this last section is all cotton, it's quite thin, so it's gonna be quite easy to sew. So I'm just gonna sew an, a box, put an X, then I'm gonna use a zipper foot to get nice and close and just do an extra line of stitching here to hold it in place. If you've got a rivet press, you could use a rivet instead if you prefer, um, that's just personal choice. Now this slider is a little bit big, but my other slider was way too small and wasn't gonna fit. So I'm gonna go with this one, even though it feels like it's maybe a little bit on the big side. I think that's the better option than going for one that's too small. Okay, so that's your finished strap. Now, take your time when you're doing that second line because you do not want to catch your slider, especially if you're using a large one like me. But that should be your adjustable strap completely finished and ready to go. So just set that aside. And now we're going to start on step two. Okay, so now we're on to step two. So you're going to need your two exterior side pieces your two exterior side accents and the two crossbody tabs that you did earlier. So first of all, you want to mark each of your exterior side accents. Now, what I've done is I've already marked both of these with a one inch space that's centered along this long edge. So this is the bottom edge if you've got a directional print. You also need to mark 
three eighths of an inch down from the ring. So I'll just show you that. You can see I've already marked mine with a chalk. So what you wanna do is sort of get your ruler as close as you possibly can to that ring and you're measuring three eighths of an inch down and just mark that across. Now grab one of each and you're going to line up that three eighths of an inch mark and it's gonna sit in between these two marks just here. So this is a little bit hard to show because of my fabric and the chalk. It's not, it's not massively clear, but hopefully you can just about see that that three eighths of an inch line is in line with this edge. So I'm gonna clip both of these together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew across this line just here, a little bit up, maybe about an eighth of an inch. I'm just going to sew that into place to hold it in place. So now that these are sewn together, we just want to take these exterior side pieces and mark them three eighths of an inch down from the top. So if you've got a directional fabric, just make sure that you're looking at the top. And from the top edge, you're measuring three eighths of an inch. And do that with both pieces. OK, so now what we need to do is place these right sides together. So they're going to be like this with the tab sticking up from the top. Now just clip that together. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew across this 3 eighths of an inch line. You're going to need a zipper foot for this because just here you are going to be sewing right past that D ring. You want to get as close as you possibly can. So if you don't get it perfect the first time round, you can just do this section again. Sometimes I have to do it a second time just to get nice and close, but make sure you're using a zipper foot. We're going to do that with both of these. So that's both of those sewn together. Now the reason I have you draw a line is because it can be hard with a zipper foot to keep your seam allowance correct and especially as you're coming over here. So I just like to do that for accuracy. Now what you want to do is push the seams down so they're behind the main side panel and so that your D-ring is pointing upwards. And what we're going to do on both of these is top stitch through here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then we're gonna to top stitch again, just below it with a quarter inch seam allowance. This is just gonna give it a little bit more strength because we've sewn it into place twice already, but just having it sewn a couple more times and sewing through all of these layers will just really hold it into place. So you want to do the same thing on both of these. Make sure the D-ring is pointing up and we're gonna to top stitch along here twice. This is how your side panel should now be looking. So you probably noticed I prefer to top stitch with my standard presser foot. I find it much easier to keep a neat line than I do with my zipper foot. I just really struggle with that. Um, but I just move my needle over so that I can get past this nice and easy because otherwise, you know, it can get in the way. Now, if you want to add a rivet, this is totally optional, but you can add, you can add a rivet here as well if you want to because there's room to sort of hold it down there. This is completely optional, you don't need to do it, but I know a lot of people just love adding rivets. So I've got my little rivet placement tool. I'm going with half an inch down. So I'm gonna push that up against the ring, make sure it's centered on the strap and give it a good mark there. So when I'm fitting rivets, I like to use this rivet punch. This I just grabbed from my local hardware shop. 
I always make sure that it's on the smallest setting and I just punch a hole through there. So I'm using double cap rivets. These have eight millimeter posts and you just pop that on until you hear it. Now a press is by far the easiest way to set rivets. So I'm using this press. It's these dies, they're called dies. Um, they come in and out and you can change them for different tools. So it's got a top one and a bottom one. And these ones are specifically for rivets with nine millimeter caps. And my caps are nine millimeters. So I just make sure that's that nice and comfortably before I press it down. And that's a rivet fitted. So that's completely optional. Sometimes it's just nice just to have even more security. Um, I don't know if you like me, but I, I really worry about my strap connectors. So I just like this idea of having as many things as possible to hold it down. Now we're on to step three, which is the exterior front. So you're going to need your exterior zip, your exterior top piece, your exterior bottom piece, and your two lining pieces these should be cut reverse so that they're opposite. Now, if you're cutting, if you haven't cut yet and you're cutting this from a directional fabric, you'll notice that these two pattern pieces match perfectly together. If you cut them out as one and then cut them according to the pattern pieces, then it will match up perfectly when you fit your zip. So that's the way I'd recommend to do it. Now, the first thing you need to do is mark the centers on everything and on both sides of the zip. Now I've already marked all of mine, so I'm gonna grab my exterior bottom piece and my zip. I'm gonna figure out which way it's going when it closes. So I want it closed on the left. So I'm going to put it right sides together with this exterior piece and clip it together. Make sure that you've matched up those centre marks. Now we're going to baste through this with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now I meant to say that if you're using zipper tape like me, sometimes it can fray on the ends. So I just use a lighter on the ends there and that just sort of melts it so that it won't fray later on. The other option would be to use some, some fray check on there. So place that right side up now that it's sewn and you need to find the pocket piece that when you put it right sides together matches it. So when I put that right sides together, you can see that it, it all lines up perfectly. So that's the side I want. I'm just going to clip that together. Okay, so now I'm going to sew through this with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now you've got that sewn into place, you want to turn these so that they're wrong sides together. And you just want to press both fabrics away from the zip. So you might find it helpful just to clip these two fabrics together. If you're using something like cotton, you could just press this with an iron to get like a really nice neat finish. So what we're going to do now is we're going to top stitch through here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now that's top stitched, grab your exterior front top. And what we're gonna do is we're going to match these center marks and just clip that right sides together. Okay. 
So now that's clipped together, we're going to baste through there with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So flip that over, grab your other pocket piece and it's going to be right sized together with your first pocket piece. So just match that up and clip it together. So all your centre marks and everything should match up and now we're just going to sew through here with a quarter inch seam allowance. You may notice that when I'm sewing my zips, I use my standard presser foot and I move my needle over as far as it can go so it's right next to the zip. That way I can sew along this line and it just makes it so much easier to get a nice straight line. Um, so if your needle moves on your machine, it might be worth giving it a try. I just find I get a much better finish than if I use a zipper foot. So press, you want to press the exterior piece up like this, just push it up away from the zip so you've got a nice, neat finish. And the next thing we're going to do is just top stitch through this top section. And on the back, you're gonna to be top stitching through the seam, but your pocket piece is gonna be kept down. So that's top stitched. Hopefully you can see what I mean about using a standard presser foot for the zip. You can see that it's like got a nice straight edge and it's nice and even on both sides. I find that really, really hard to achieve with the zipper foot. So by moving my needle over and using my standard presser foot, these teeth kind of guide it and give you a nice straight line, which just helps give it a nice finish. So flip that over. And what we're gonna do is just mark this longer pocket piece. So you can see that this one's longer and you just want to mark that. and then pull it away so it's completely on its own and trim it down. So your pocket pieces should now match perfectly at the bottom and um, just clip those together And what we're going to do is just sew the bottom of the pocket closed with a quarter inch seam allowance. So just make sure that when you're sewing it, you pull it away from the rest because you only want to sew through these two pocket pieces. That's your pocket piece closed. So the next thing that we're going to do is just baste these sides just to keep it all together. So just put some clips down the sides. Make sure that your pocket's lying nice and flat. And what we're going to do is baste down both sides with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now, if you've got a metal zip, just be careful, maybe hand crank it over there because you don't want to break a needle. Um, but I'm using a nylon zipper, so I don't need to worry about that. So you may have noticed when I did that, I did it on the cork side for here and I did it from the pocket side here. That's because my fabric wanted to stretch a little bit. So I wanted to start sewing at the top and finish at the bottom. That way any stretch would just come out at the bottom rather than bunching up at the zip. So that's that step done. Now we'll move on to the exterior back. So for step four, you're going to need your exterior back piece. Then you're going to need your two pocket pieces. So one of these should be a lining piece and one is an exterior. You're going to have two small scrap pieces of Peltex foam, anything like that. That's just for the magnetic snap. So you'll also have your magnetic snap and washers. And at the end of this part, you're going to need your two exterior side panels, your front panel and the foam for the exterior. But I'm just going to set those aside for a moment while we work on this pocket. So the first thing I'm going to do is to mark the lining piece and the exterior back ready for the magnetic snap. So grab your pattern pieces, 
So for me, I've got acrylic pattern pieces and make sure that you're marking this at the top. So if you've got a directional fabric, then you want your magnetic snap near the top. So I'm just gonna mark that on my lining piece. And for my exterior back, I'm going to use the exterior back piece and do the same thing. So once those are marked, grab a washer. And what you want to do is make sure it's centered over that dot and just mark those two side pieces. Now we're gonna go ahead and cut the exterior ones. So I'm gonna use a seam ripper for this, but you need to be careful because sometimes you can slip and just cut the hole way too big. So just be careful with this. You might prefer to use some small scissors or a craft knife. Now I'm not gonna do my lining yet because in the past, I, I always treat this with fray check. And what I've then done is sewn it together with this panel and I've ended up marking it with the fray check. So I'm just gonna leave the lining panel for a minute. Now we also need to do the same thing on these pieces of Peltex. So I'm just gonna mark that on both pieces. And again, just slip that. So grab the female piece of your magnetic snap and just pop that through the slits. Then what you want to do is put a piece of Peltex on there. So this could be foam, it could be anything really, but Peltex is what I had scraps from. And then pop, pop the washer on there. And lastly, you're just gonna fold this back. So you can see that the Peltex protects the fabric from these. Now, a lot of people also fuse um, something onto them now to protect the lining fabric later. I've never had a problem with that, so I don't personally do it, but you can cover them now if you want to. So set that aside and grab your two slip pocket pieces. Now you'll notice that these are almost square, but they're not quite. So make sure that you're using the top. So the top of each piece, place them right sides together and just clip those together. So if you're in any doubt about which way is the top, just make sure you pull out your pattern piece again and check. Now we're gonna sew the top here with a quarter inch seam allowance. So now you just want to turn that and press the seam open at the top. So I'm just gonna use my fingers because I've got cork and I don't really want to use my iron on cork if I can help it. And then what we're gonna do is just neaten up this edge, but I'm gonna leave like a little bit of the lining on show. So when it's done, you'll be able to see like the trim and it just gives it a really nice little effect. So I'm just gonna try to press that seam so that you can just see the lining. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to top stitch through this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So once that's top stitch, we're gonna fit the rest of the magnetic snap. So just turn it over and we just need to cut these slits. Now, when you do this, make sure that you don't touch the exterior. You only want to cut this lining piece. Now, if you've got cotton like me, you're going to want to use some fray check on this just to make sure that this doesn't fray as time goes by. 
So I just use this um, Prim Fray Check, but I think there's a couple of different brands that do it. And just put a little bit on the slits. Then take the male part of your magnetic snap and push that through. Now you can use a 14 or an 18 millimeter snap. This one is an 18 millimeter, but they both fit just fine. So just place that stabilizer on the back and then put your washer on and fold your prongs back. Sometimes this can be a bit tough and sometimes I find if I grab something like my pin dish or a rotary cutter or something like that, I can just push it down, it helps to push it down. So. I'm just going to trim a tiny bit of my stabilizer out because it's just going to get caught up there. Okay. And there you go, that's your magnetic snap fitted. So the next thing is to grab your exterior back and clip that into place. Now I'm just going to clip the very top of the pocket down. So just make sure that's nice and level, that it's straight. And then lift up just the exterior piece, push that out the way and clip these sides down. Now we want to reduce bulk in the seam. So we're just going to sew this lining piece down to close the pocket and then we're gonna trim it out. So I'm gonna sew this with a three quarter inch seam allowance. Once you've got that sewn into place, we just want to trim down the lining piece. Now make sure you're only trimming the lining piece, nothing else. So I'm just going to leave, I don't know what that is, eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, something like that. There you go. Now when I sew this on later um, onto the base, I'm not going to be sewing through this as well. So it's just going to reduce the bulk and it makes the base sit neater, which means like you get a nice crisp seam. So pull the exterior piece down and just clip that into place. Working with a bit of a strange cork this time. It's a bit stretchy. It's a little bit odd to work with. So you might notice that some of my pieces look like they're slightly out of shape, but it's just because it's it really stretches when you sew it. Okay, so now that's clipped into place, I'm going to just baste with an eighth of an inch just to close the pocket off and then we'll move on to constructing the exterior. So I would recommend starting at the top, sewing down and then flipping it over and starting at the top again, because if you're working with a stretchy fabric like mine, you can probably see there how much longer this front pocket piece ended up being because it just stretched as I sewed it. So if I then, if I'd then sewn down here across and back up, this pocket would have looked really wonky because this would have stretched up here. So just make sure that you do both of them from top to bottom. That's just the best way I think to avoid any problems. So I'm just going to trim this little bit off that's stretched because I don't want it to throw me out later on. Now set that aside and grab your front panel and one of your side panels. Now we're going to put these right sides together and just clip those together. Okay, so you can probably tell, I think I used slightly too big of a seam allowance here, which means my side panels ended up very slightly shorter. So what I'm gonna do, because almost certainly I'll end up with stretch on the panel that's on top, I'm gonna to make sure that I sew with this on top. I've matched up here. Hopefully by the time I get to the bottom, it will have stretched enough that it will actually line up perfectly. Um, if not, I'm just gonna make sure that at the end, that if I need to trim anything off, that I trim off the same amount of my lining pieces so that they fit perfectly still. 
but if you've used the correct seam allowances all along, um, you shouldn't actually have this problem. Just make sure that it's not this panel that's the problem. So just, yeah, just check that it matches this one. I know then that my side panel is the problem. So now we're just going to sew down here with three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And if you're using a metal zip, just watch out as you get to this zip. Mine is a nylon zip, so it's not going to be a problem. OK, so you can see that hasn't quite stretched to the end, but I've just checked and it's out by an eighth of an inch. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to leave it as it is. This is why we have three eighths of an inch seam allowances in bag making, because it leaves room for things like this. So I'm just going to push this side panel back. Now I'm making sure that the seams are behind this side panel. So as we top stitch through here in a minute, you're going to notice that the seams are behind. We're stitching through the seams. So just give that a nice little press back. And then I'm going to top stitch along here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. When you're sewing these side panels on, just make sure that your D-rings are at the top, that you've got both your panels the right way up. So the zip is closing to the left, it's closing upwards and your D-rings are pointing upward. So grab your second side panel and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to clip that together and just sew it with three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Then I'm going to push it back and top stitch it with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So I'll do both of those at the machine now. So that's that side panel sewn on. So you can see that this one matches up pretty well, whereas that one doesn't. So clearly I just wasn't using the right seam allowance up here or possibly I just cut it out wrong. So if something like this happens, it's just not really a big problem. That's what the seam allowances are for. So just watch out for it later on. Just make sure that you, that you clip it together with that in mind. So grab your last exterior panel. Make sure that your pocket is pointing upwards and we're just going to clip that right sides together with the side panel. So you just need to sew through this with three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now, if you're using a bulky fabric like me, you might want to use a hump jumper just to get over this bit. Depends how much bulk you've got. If you're using a bulky fabric like vinyl for the sides as well, you might have wanted to use a um, hump jumper when you're top stitching these side edges. So just keep it handy because you might find it in, useful in a few bits of this pattern. Okay, so after I sewed that on, I pushed the seams behind the side panel again and top stitched this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Just be careful as you're sewing that this doesn't get caught on your machine and mess up your top stitching. So grab your foam panel for your exterior. And what we're going to do is just baste this on. So I'm just going to clip it around for all edges. So my foam is clipped all the way around there now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have it foam side up as I'm stitching this on. I'm just basting it with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. The reason that we have it foam side up is so that it doesn't stretch. Whereas if you're sewing it with the fabric side up, you're going to get a lot of stretch going on and it's going to end up being the wrong shape when you're finished. So when you're sewing that foam on, just make sure that your panel is nice and taut when you clip it. So it's nicely stretched out. It's not sort of going to be wavy in the middle. Make sure your D-rings are down because otherwise they're going to be in the way as you sew the top. Um, and if you've decided that you want to use Decaville light or something like that instead of foam, then you want to cut it an inch shorter in height and an inch narrower in width. So what will happen then is it will be half an inch in on each edge as you fuse it now. 
and that just means it's not going to get stuck in to your seam allowances. So just bear that in mind if you're using something like Decaville Light. Now we're just going to pull these final two edges together and just clip those together. And I'm going to sew through this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So once you've got that sewn together, we're just going to trim this foam out of the seam allowance because otherwise we're just going to end up with one bulky seam. So I'm just going to remove these basting stitches. So when you're removing your basting stitches, just be careful that you're not cutting your main stitches. And the same here. So we're just going to trim the foam out and just make sure that you're not cutting your stitches. I don't think I've actually ever cut my stitches, so I think maybe it's quite hard to do. But um, just bear that in mind because you don't want to damage your stitching. This will make the top stitching a little bit easier as well as meaning that we don't get a bulky seam. Okay, so once that out, once that's out, we're going to top stitch it. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this is a little bit awkward. Top stitching a tube is always awkward, but it's a really good skill to learn for bag making. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push the seams again behind the side panel. So just kind of press it. So you, we're just gonna press this seam here. Okay, and we're gonna leave it the way it is, inside out and we're gonna to top stitch it. So I would recommend, if this is your first time to stitching a tube like this, definitely use a matching thread. So I probably should have said that at the beginning because you want all your top stitching to match, um, but use, yeah, a matching thread. It makes a world of difference. This isn't gonna be particularly easy. Just take your time with it. We're just gonna do it with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure that your seams are behind there as you're stitching. And again, you're stitching the side panel. Okay, so that is now top stitched. Now, that is awkward, let's be honest, and it's probably the hardest part of making this bag, but just go with it. Um, I mean, I've used a contrasting thread and it has come out pretty neat because this is not the first time I've done this. I've done it quite a few times, obviously on the prototypes of this bag and my Calderon bag. So um, just take your time. Every time you feel like you can't go any further, just put your needle in and just take a minute and then rearrange the bag, but make sure that you leave your needle in when you're rearranging the bag to get it to where you need it. And if you need to, you can just hand crank the whole way down. And then that way you can watch every stitch that you're doing. It's still only gonna take you a few minutes and you'll get a really nice result. So that is the exterior panel sorted. So now we'll move on to the exterior base. For this next step, you're gonna need your exterior base piece and your two stabilizers. So one of these should be a sew in foam and the other one should be like an ultra firm stabilizer. So I'm using Peltex 71F. You could use 70F or Peltex S520 or Decaville Heavy or anything like that really. There's, there's loads of different options. You could even, I've seen people use like plasticky stuff. So long as it's, um, you know, durable. Yeah, I don't see any problem with using anything like that really. 
Now, although mine is fusible, I don't want to fuse it to my cork because I don't want to put heat on there. So I'm going to use Fabri-Tac glue and I will just use some of that to stick this down. Okay, so with this one, you want to keep it out of the seam allowances. So just place it nice and central, making sure that it's inset equally all the way around. So it should be about half inch all the way around. Then just put your foam on top and clip that together to the base. Once that's clipped, what we're gonna do is we're going to baste this into place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around. So once that's basted on, you need to grab your exterior panels and make sure that you've got the bottom facing up. So this is the end without your D-rings and things like that. And what we need to do to make the base fit is to snip into this all the way around because the base where we're sewing is three eighths of an inch in and that's a much smaller circumference than the exterior. So to make it fit, we need to stretch this into place. So just grab a little pair of scissors and you're just gonna trim into it just a quarter of an inch and you're gonna do it roughly an inch apart. And you just wanna do this all the way around the bottom. Okay, so once you've done that, if you haven't already, you need to mark your centers. So I forgot to do this earlier. So for each panel, just bring it in to meet the edges and just mark your center and do this on all four panels. Okay, so once your centers are marked on there, you also need to mark your centers on your oval base. So I've done that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna match up my center marks. So we're putting this right sides together and these long edges are going against the front and back panels. So just match up to start with your four center marks. So I'm just gonna clip that one together. So once you've got those center marks clipped into place, you need to clip the rest of the base into place. So you just really need to stretch this out, which is why we snipped into it. So you'll see it stretching around here. These panels are stretching to make them fit. So just make it fit all the way around and just clip it into place around the whole base. So once that base is clipped into place, you can sew it on um, straight away if you want to. I prefer, I prefer to um, baste it on by hand first. I just find with sewing curves, they can sometimes like move a bit as you're sewing. And a lot of people prefer to use staples, but I don't like using staples because I have to kind of dodge them when I'm sewing. I have to try really hard to keep them out my seam allowance, uh, keep them in my seam allowance. And then you've got to take them out afterwards. So this is what I've started doing in recent months. So I just hand baste this into place. And it just means that when I get to the sewing machine, it doesn't move at all. It just stays exactly where it is. So all I'm gonna do is these, I've, I've used a pink thread so you can see what I'm doing. They're pretty massive stitches. I'm just using a hand needle. I think I only own one, so um, I don't know anything specific about it, but it's just a hand needle that I found and I'm just basting it on. You can see how big my stitches are. I still leave my clips on just in case, you know, just to give it a little bit of extra holding it in place, making sure that nothing moves. But I find this really helps me to get a nice, neat finish. So that's what it looks like when it's done. Now, you don't need to be neat with these stitches. The only criteria really is to keep them inside the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So that's pretty much all I've done. 
Other than that, they're messy, they're all over the place. It doesn't matter. It's just to hold it in place while I sew it. That takes me about five minutes to do and it saves me a lot of time on the sewing machine because I'm not stressing about them moving. It, it just, everything just stays where it needs to be. Um, I also save time compared to using staples because I don't have to take them out. So yeah, if you've not tried this method, just give it a go. So now we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew this on with three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Then I'm going to do a second row of stitching just inside the seam allowance, just to strengthen the first row of stitching. So the easiest way to sew this is with it this way up. I find it much easier to move my needle over um, to the far left so then I can sew it as if I was sewing with a quarter inch seam allowance but I'm actually sewing with three eighths. Um, for me on my machine that's a lot easier so if your machine has that option you can give that a try. Next what I'm going to do is just use some pinking shears on these curves so just be careful not to cut your stitching but this just gives it a nice like neat finish inside because it means it can sort of spread itself out around the curves. So when you're doing that, just be very cautious not to cut your stitching. So you can just have a look inside, just check that it's really neat on the inside. I don't bother turning mine out right now because then I have to turn it back again at the end. So I, I just leave it as it is. But it's just a good idea to just check that your seams are really neat inside and check you've not got any issues in there. So set that aside and now we're going to move on to the lining. Now we're on to the lining. So you're going to need your lining zipper. So I'm using zipper tape and a pull. You're gonna need your zipper pocket facing, two pocket pieces, and your main lining panel. Now your main lining panels are 10 inches wide. So just make sure that you've got it the right way around, not that way, but this way. And grab your pocket facing. Now on the back, so this is the wrong side of the fabric, you need to draw this box. It's in the diagram, but basically what I do is I just measure one inch in from each side and draw a line and you'll end up with this rectangle. Now I'm going to fold this down the center and just crease it. You probably notice that I'm using waterproof canvas. So I'm going to crease this center on this main lining panel as well. So my waterproof canvas, um, the slightly sort of wet looking side, the shiny side, I suppose, that is the wrong side. So what I'm doing is I'm putting this right sides together. I'm going to put it half an inch down from the top and I'm lining up my creases so that I know it's completely centered. So once that's centered, I'm going to use some large clips to hold it in place because it's waterproof canvas, so I don't want to use pins. So I've got these jumbo wonder clips, which are perfect for this sort of occasion. Now, what we need to do is just sew around this box. I'm going to start halfway along a line because I find that if I start in a corner, I don't always get like a nice neat corner when I'm sewing. So I'm going to start here. Make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and end, and I'm just going to go all the way around the rectangle. Once 
once you've got that sewn in, we need to cut here. Now on the diagram on the pattern, you'll be able to see that there's two small triangles coming off the end of a center line. I haven't drawn mine in because I'm using this Taylor's chalk and it's just, it's not got a fine enough line for me to draw it. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut where that line would be. So I'm just cutting down the center. And then when you get near the end, you should have it breaking off into a triangle. So what I'm gonna do is just follow where those lines would be. And you're gonna cut as close as you possibly can to these corner stitches, but do not cut through your stitches. The closer you can get, the neater to the finish. Okay, so if I had standard cotton, I would just press this with the iron, but instead I'm just gonna press it with my fingers. So I'm just trying to get a nice, neat line around where I've sewn. Now you need to pull this facing through to the back. Now, as I feared, it's much harder with waterproof canvas. So if you have got cotton, this is going to be way easier to do because you can just press this with an iron and get like a really nice, neat finish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some double sided tape to stick these long edges down and that should hold it all in place. So once your facing is looking nice and neat, grab your two pocket pieces and your lining zipper. So I'm using zipper tape, so I'm just going to treat the ends with um, a bit of heat just to stop it from fraying. And then I'm going to put my zip head on. So the way that I put my zip heads on, I just put it a tiny bit in on one side, then I put the other side in a little bit. And then I put it on a flat surface and just push down with these fingers and give it a bit of a tug. It's always easier with um, the number five zips, but these ones aren't too bad. So grab one of your pocket pieces. This is gonna be right side up. This is the top edge. I'm gonna place my zip on top of that right side up as well. Um, I can't find my little clips, so I'm just gonna use my large ones to just clip that in place. And then I'm going to sew through the top here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Right, that's all sewn on. Don't you just love it when your bobbin runs out at the right moment? It just finished, so I'm pretty chuffed with that. So place your second pocket piece right side up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this side of the zip and place it right side up on top. So your two pocket pieces now should be right sides together. So I know that this isn't the best fabric for showing which side is which, um, but it is slightly darker on the wrong side. So this is definitely right sides together. So I'm just gonna clip these two together. And now we're going to sew through this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now that's sewn in place, you should have the right side of the zip on the wrong side of the fabric and the wrong side of the zip on the right side of the fabrics. So ordinarily, if you've got cotton, I would just press this with an iron because you, basically you want this to lay as flat as possible because it's going to make the next step easier. 
So I'm just going to press this with my fingers. And if you want to, you can use a bit of like glue or something to hold that down. Some people just sew it down. But what we're going to do is we're going to put the hole that we just cut in our main lining piece on top of this. So we want this to lay nice and flat, but I'm going to use some double sided tape on here. And this is then going to hold that pocket facing in place. But it's also going to help this to lay flat a little bit. So this step is much easier if you're using cotton that you can just press. So peel off your double sided tape. All right, so I've peeled the double sided tape off both sides. I'm making sure that my zip is going left and I'm going to grab my main panel, which has my pocket facing on and place that on top. Now, this is a lot easier when you're using cotton because you can press it and it just kind of stays flat, but this is not staying flat. So you just want to make sure that your pocket is centered and that you've got an even amount above and below the zipper tape. Okay, so I'm going to spend a few minutes just neatening that up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch this and we're going to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around the edge of this rectangle. Make sure that this pocket piece is up and the other one is down. So that's now sewn into place. I think in the future, I'll probably use cotton for my pockets if I'm using waterproof canvas for the lining because it's just so awkward where it's trying to roll up on me. Um, so yeah, I think I prefer that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over and pull the shorter pocket down so that I can see how much needs trimming off this back pocket piece. So what I'm gonna do is just trim off this bottom piece. Now you can mark it or you can just kind of give it a go. So I'm just going to give it a go. Okay. I mean, you don't have to trim it if you don't want to, because we're going to fold it up anyway. So what we're going to do is fold up this pocket piece by about a quarter of an inch. And then we're going to fold up the back pocket piece to match it. And what this is going to do is give us a really nice, neat finish for when we're um, sewing the pocket closed later, because we're going to turn the bag through this pocket and this will just be really easy to sew shut later on. And you can see now that the pocket is short enough that it's not going to be in the seam allowance. So we're just going to sew the sides of the pocket closed. Make sure you backstitch really well at the bottom. What I'm going to do I'm just going to pull this away and I'm going to sew through it like this on each side. So just make sure that you're not sewing through this main lining piece. So you're just sewing through the facing, the zip and the pocket. And we're going to do that on both sides with a quarter inch seam allowance. So for this step, you're going to need your two main lining panels. You're going to need your lining base and your two lining tops, as well as your top zip. So I'll just set everything else aside because we're going to start with the zip to begin with. So find the way that it opens. So mine's going that way. Uh, sorry, the way that it closes. Mine's closing that way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure and mark three quarters of an inch in on that end. Okay, so you just want to mark it three quarters of an inch in on both sides and then open that up. And I'm going to do this next step by hand because I cannot get it to stay neat on 
the machine, but you can do it but with the machine if you prefer. What we're going to do is we're just going to pinch it on this mark. So you're going to pinch it like that. And this mark is going to create a fold. So I just find this easier to just sew in place with a needle because no matter how many times I try and do it on the machine, it doesn't quite stay as a 90 degree fold. Okay, so when you do the second one, you're gonna pinch it again and just make sure that they match perfectly before you go ahead and sew that one down. So that is your zip prepared. I'm just gonna trim the edges off here because it'll make it slightly easier if the zip is the same width all the way down. And again, I'm just gonna use a little bit of heat because that stops it from fraying. Now you can decide in the pattern whether you want to do a fabric zip tail or a hardware one. So I've decided I'm gonna do a hardware one. So I've just got one of these little hardware zips and what I do is I just trim this very slightly. And then I fold it in once and fold it in twice. And I do the same thing on this side, fold it in once, fold it in twice. And then I just push that into my zip tail. Now, if you want to, you can use a little bit of glue. You can put a bit of glue inside your zip tail and that will help just hold it in place. And what you want is a really small magnetic screwdriver to fit this. So if you want to do a fabric zip tail, just follow the instructions in the pattern. Personally, I just really like these hardware ones. I just feel like they look really neat. Okay, so set your zip aside. Okay, so set your zip aside, grab your two lining tops. Now these should be slanting in at the bottom. You should be able to see that they're, they're not the same width at the top of the bottom. So make sure that the shorter edge is at the bottom like this and we're going to measure two inches in from the short edge and just mark that and what you want to do is just mark that all the way up that piece and then we're going to mark again two inches in from this short end so I'll just mark that again. Make sure that you're using a marking tool that will come off later. So this is just chalk, Taylor's chalk that will come off later. But test it on a scrap piece first because I have had chalk that I used on cork once and I couldn't get it off. So we're going to do the exact same thing on this one, measuring two inches in on each side from the short end. Okay, now grab your zip and just undo it. And what you want to do is place it right sides together. So right side of the zip with the right side of the fabric and line up these teeth with this mark here. And I'm just going to clip that into place. And then I'm going to continue clipping this zip 
along this edge. So again, we're using the shorter bottom edge. Now, when you get to this second line, what you want to do is just fold this up like that. And you want this edge of the zip to be running up this line. So I'm just going to clip that up there. Okay, so hopefully you can see that this line here is running up here. Now we're just going to baste this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so once that's sewn in place, grab your panel that has the pocket on it. And what we're going to do is we're just going to flip this down so that they're right sides together. So your zip is going to be sandwiched in between these two pieces and just clip that together. Okay, now we're going to sew through this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now because the zip is here and I want to get a nice straight line, I'm going to move my needle as far as it goes over to the left so that I can use my presser foot to um, sort of budge it up against this zip line and that'll mean that I get a nice straight line. So it's about 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and make sure you back stitch at the beginning and end. Okay, I've sewn that into place and I made sure that I just left this clipped while I was doing that. But now I'm going to unclip that and push the lining top up. So you just wanna like get a nice crease, push it up away from the zip. Again, if you just got standard cotton for your lining, you can go ahead and use an iron to do this. But now I'm going to top stitch through this top bit with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So when you're sewing that bit, just make sure the zip is hanging down because you'll see that it naturally like curves down into the bag and, that, and that's how we want it when we're top stitching it. So just turn that around so it's like that. Grab your second lining top piece and place it right side up. Make sure you've got the shorter end, which is the bottom here. And you're gonna grab this zip and you're gonna put the teeth on the right hand mark. So remember we marked it down here. So just line up the teeth nice and neat and clip it into place. Just clip that along the rest of the way. Okay, so you might find that easier to bring it around here. Now, once you get here, you're again gonna fold this up. So you're just gonna fold it up so that this part of the zip is running up the line that you drew. And clip that there. And I'll just clip it here as well. Okay, so we're just going to baste this on. If you're worried that you haven't got this the right way around, just don't panic. Just just baste it. You know, don't back stitch or anything because then if it is wrong, you can just rip it out in a minute. You can just tear out those stitches and try again. But uh, try not to overthink this bit because it kind of looks a bit weird and it looks a bit complicated, but generally it comes out right. I've actually never had it come out wrong somehow. So um, just just take a minute and just follow the instructions and it should just come out great. But we'll base it into place and I'll show you what it should look like when it's zipped up. Okay, so we can just check now. Uh, just unclip that. You can just check that it does up. Now, it might take you a minute to swivel it the right way around, but that is what it should look like when it's done up. So if it's not doing up straight away, just check that you've not got it like twisted or something like that. And if it if it doesn't do up like that, then you just need to go back and make sure that you've done it correctly. But that's how it should be looking. So I will grab that again. I'm just going to clip that piece back up there. 
I'm just clipping the zip back onto that line that we drew. Now grab your remaining lining piece. Make sure that you've got it so it's 10 inches wide. And you're just going to place this right sides together. So the zip is sandwiched between and just clip those together. Okay, so same as before, we're going to sew through this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so same as before, unclip your zip and then push this up away from the zip. And we're just going to top stitch this again with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And we're going through the lining top. When you're sewing that, again, make sure that your zip is hanging down into the lining with a 90 degree angle like that. And when you're sewing through this, you're top stitching it, you're gonna be going through the seams at the back as well. Okay, so that is our lining ready. So if you can just manage to untwist it, then you can do up your zip. There we go. And now we can assemble it. So the first thing I like to do is just match up where these joins are because I want those to look nice and neat on the lining. So I'll just clip it together there and then I'm going to clip it the rest of the way down the side. Um, so you might just want to tuck this zipper tail into your zipper pocket. I'm just gonna put it in there. And I'm just gonna make sure that I don't accidentally sew through it. So clip the other side of the lining together the same as you did with the first. Now I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew down both sides with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now as you reach these curves, just make sure that you follow the line up, like the shape of it. So just follow the curve round as you go. This means that your lining is going to fit really neatly inside the bag because it needs to be slightly smaller than the exterior. Get your clips out because we're going to attach the base. So what we're going to do is very similar to the exterior. First of all, I'm just going to snip into the bottom here and we're just snipping no more than a quarter of an inch. Okay. Cause you've got three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So you're just doing little snips. It's just enough to stretch it out and they're about an inch apart. Okay, and the next thing to do is to mark the centers on your base and on your lining panels. Right, my centers are all marked, so I'm gonna put the base right sides together with this lining piece. I'm gonna match up my two center marks and just clip that into place. Then I'll match up the other side so just match those two centre marks. So that's those two long edges done. Now these centre marks are going to match with these side seams. So I'm just going to spread that seam open and just make sure that's matching up nice and neatly on that seam. Do the same thing on this side. Okay, and once that's done, I just need to clip the rest of this into place. So I'm just gonna work my way around and just like the exterior, 
it's going to be a stretch. It's going to feel like the base is too big, but that's because you need to utilize these snips that you made and stretch these panels. So it's just going to stretch out so that it fits the base in. So once you've got that all clipped together, we're going to sew around this base with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to do it this way up on my machine. I find that helps me get a neater result. If you want to, you could hand base this again like we did with the exterior, but personally I don't do that on my linings. I find them easier to sew because they haven't got the stabilizer in there and they also don't necessarily need to look quite as perfect because it's in the lining um, and the way it sits inside instead of outside I feel like you, you can't see if that, there actually is a tiny little pucker. So I'm just gonna take that over to the sewing machine and sew that with three eighths of an inch seam allowance. When you get to your pocket, just sort of pull it out of the way, make sure that you don't accidentally sew through it. It should be kept out of the seams anyway because of the length, but if it sneaks down on you, then sometimes you can catch it. So I would recommend just keeping it out of the way. So you probably noticed that I was using my awl as I did that. Um, that's because unlike with the exterior, I hadn't you know, hand basted it. So I needed to try and hold it in place while I sewed. So I find that an awl works well for that. Um, you can also get stilettos, which I think are like more designed for sewing, but that just works fine. I think they're, they're pretty much the same thing. So I'm just gonna trim my lining with some pinking shears. This will help the curves to sit better. You'll notice I caught my pocket just, I just caught it there. It's because I hadn't positioned it centrally. Um, so it might be a good thing to mark yours when you're doing it so that you actually get it centered properly. It's not really a problem. It's just that it's just been caught there. So that is my lining all finished. So I'm going to grab my exterior and move on to the final step. So on your exterior, you're going to want to mark your centers on these side panels. So I'm just going to fold them so that it meets and I can find the center. I'll just get that D-ring out the way. So I'm just gonna do that on the other side as well.
Now you'll want to open your zipper pocket on your lining. I'm actually going to leave mine closed because I want to show you how to open it if I forget. Because so many people say to me that they will unstitch a bag because they forgot to leave the pocket open to birth it. But you really don't need to, so I'm going to show you how I do that. But if you want a simpler time of it, you can just undo the pocket. Okay, so make sure your zip's fully undone. You're going to put this inside the exterior. So you want to match up the front to the front. So front of the lining has nothing on it. And the front of the exterior has that diagonal zip pocket. So you want to make sure they're facing towards each other. Like that. Now, we're going to clip the side seams open here. Now, if you want to um, get an even better finish, I would just baste those seams open. So actually I might do that before I clip this together. But I've just sewn those seams open at the top, just with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. It will help later for making sure that the top stitching is as easy as possible. So what you want to do is match that side seam to the center mark on the exterior. and clip that together. I'm just gonna put a couple more clips over there. Oh, and before you go any further, just make sure that your D-rings are pointing down into the bag, like that. That will be a lot easier to sew. So match up the other side seam to the other mark on the exterior and clip those together. So the reason I um, sew my seams open on the lining is because otherwise sometimes they can get folded over a bit. And then when you come to top stitching, you kind of add a two or three, four layers that you really don't need to add. So it's just much easier to do that. So just clip the rest of the top together, just making sure that it lines up nice and neat. Once you've got that clipped together, we're gonna to take it over to the sewing machine and sew it with three eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way around then I'm going to do a second row of stitching just behind the first inside the seam allowance just to give it a little bit of reinforcement. Now if you've got a domestic sewing machine like me and it's got one of the little removable tables you can take that off sew it around your machine like this it makes it quite a bit easier to sew. So that is all sewn together and I've also just trimmed the foam out of that top seam. So that's completely optional but I really like to do that. I feel like it's better for my domestic machine and um, it just makes top stitching just feel more comfortable to be honest. So I just did that the same as I did with this seam earlier on so I haven't bothered to show you that. Now you need to birth the bag so pull your lining out first of all. Now if you've forgotten to open your zip inside, then I'm going to show you how, to, how I do this because you don't need to unsew it if you've forgotten to open the pocket. All you do is you just reach through with this until you can find the zipper pull and then you just grab onto it and just slide it open. So then you can get inside and what you're going to do is grab the exterior at the base and just try and pull it through the pocket. So this will feel a little bit uncomfortable if it's your first time doing this, but this is quite a common bag technique. And this is why we backstitched well on that pocket because it's gonna be under a bit of pressure. Now, I strongly recommend that you push instead of pulling. I think it results in a better finish and just make sure that you, it, it makes sure that you don't you know, pull any stitches. Whereas when you're pulling it, it can 
I think you're more inclined to, to do some damage. Although I've got to be honest, I've only ever split one bag, birthing it, and that was just where the pocket seam is. And that bag was ridiculous. I never ever should have done the pocket so small and I can't believe I actually managed to get it birthed. So I think it must be pretty hard to rip it. I've never actually ripped anywhere else other than just that little bit on one bag. So it should come out nice and easy like that. Now put your hand in the pocket and push the exterior out. Spend a bit of time like rolling these seams out and pushing from this side. You might be able to see that I can just run my fingers down the inside. Just pushing that seam out, getting a nice finish. Okay, once you've done that, you can put your pocket back in and then push your bag lining in. Now at this point, I don't um, like to sew up my pocket because I wanna be able to roll these seams out and get a really nice finish. And to do that, sometimes I need to reach inside and just sort of push the seam out. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna clip it all the way around. So I'm gonna roll these seams to get them to sit nice and neat like that, and then clip them. So you just wanna make sure that you don't have anything like this. You're, you're just trying to roll the bulk out. So if you put your hand in and sort of push up where the seam is, you can just get like a neat to finish. Now, if you're working entirely with cotton, you can take this over to the iron and give it a bit of a press, that will give it a really nice finish. So I'm just gonna do that around the rest of the top of the bag. Okay, so push that lining back in, just try and get it a little bit neater. And I like to close my zipper pocket now because otherwise it can catch on my machine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna top stitch it. Now again, I'm gonna do it like this on my machine. If you are using an industrial, which is like a, a flatbed industrial, a lot of people say it's easier to top stitch it like that. Um, so you could give that a try, but for me, because I can take the table off my machine, I'm just going to go around like this. Now, whenever you're maneuvering the bag while sewing, make sure you leave your needle in. So leave your needle in before you sort of shift it around. Even if you're not lifting up the presser foot, just leave the needle in. It just makes sure that you don't move and lose and end up with one key stitching. So the other thing to note for my top stitching, I'm gonna be using an eighth of an inch seam allowance, but I'm going to increase the tension on my machine. So I put mine quite high. If I don't, I end up with big loops on the inside, which just doesn't look good. Um, so this might not be the case with your machine, but if you're getting loops, it might be worth looking at your top tension and whether it needs to be increased. So I decided I didn't want to backstitch my top stitching today. So what I've done is I just started sort of in the ditch just there and I've left my threads really long. So what I'm gonna do is tug on these and pull them through from the other side. See, these little loops will appear and you'll be able to pull the other side through as long as you pull the right one. So you can see that thread coming through now. There we go. And then I'm just gonna put on this one as well and try to get this one to come through. So sometimes when you leave the threads long like this, 
you kind of end up with a bit of knotting going on so it might just take you a minute to figure out which bit to pull on so just make sure that as you're pulling it that it's coming through there we go so once they're all on the right side on the same side what i do is i just tie them off so i'm just going to triple knot these and then i've got myself a needle and i'm going to put these threads, all of them, through the needle. So this is a little bit faffy, but it means you don't have that back stitching going on, which is nice. So I'm just gonna try and get these through the needle. Okay, so all four threads are through my needle. So this is another good reason for not sewing up your pocket until later. What you wanna do is sort of pull this out a bit and we're gonna, push this straight through where one of where two of those threads are coming from. So watch out that you don't poke your hand on the other side. Okay, and you should be able to feel the needle. This is where you get poked. And you're just going to pull it through. And there you go. As you pull it through, all the threads come through with it. So you can see they're on the inside now. So that is a nice tidy way of finishing your top stitching. So the final part is gonna be to sew up this pocket. So go ahead and pull that out. This would be a little bit easier if I had not sewn it into the side, but that's okay, I can still do it. Okay, so I'm just going to clip this together at the bottom. Trying to keep that fold where we folded them in. So take that over to your machine and you just want to sew that closed with an eighth of an inch seam allowance or if you can manage it a sixteenth of an inch um, just whatever you're comfortable with really if you want the stitching to be completely hidden then you could use um hand stitching that that type of hand stitching where it's sort of invisible when it's finished but this is going to be inside a pocket no one's ever going to notice in my opinion so i'm just going to sew this with the machine Okay, so your bag is done. Um, now, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is that when I was top stitching, I changed to a size 90 needle. Um, that's just because there's so many layers when you're top stitching and I wanted like a, a nice tough needle that was gonna go through the cork and that sort of thing. So that's the needle I changed to for that. For the rest of my lining, I was using a size um, 75, I think it is, um, Microtex needle because I'm using waterproof canvas. And for most of the exterior, I just used a size 80. So I do tend to change a little bit as I go, depending on the materials I'm using and depending on the thickness. So shove your pocket back in there. and just need to take a second to really push those corners in nice and neat and do up your zip and then get your lining nice and neat. And then we'll have a quick look at what the finished bag looks like. So that's your finished bag. Hopefully you love it. Um, so I just wanted to go through where I got a few of my supplies from because I know a lot of people are going to ask. I'll put it in the description as well. Um, but I get my cork from MB Cork in Portugal. Um, this zipper tape and the zipper pull on top were given to me by Zipper Valley in Canada. So she um, gifted me some zips to try out so I could recommend to other people in Canada. Um, my zipper pull is custom designed. So I got that from Alibaba, the country cow ones. Um, and the Rifle Paper Co fabric on the outside and the waterproof canvas on the inside are both from Little Stitcher Sews. So she gifted those to me as well. So the lining has worked out really nicely. I'm really, really happy with that. 
um, I think it's just so much nicer than the really thick waterproof canvas. This just fits the lining perfectly. So I'm quite happy with the bag all together. Hopefully if you were sewing this oval base for the very first time and you hand basted it, then you'll be really happy with how it turned out. Cause I quite love, I, I really quite like how this turns out um, when I hand based it. I just feel like it gives it a really nice finish. So just get your strap on and your bag is ready to go. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any suggestions for future patterns or anything, just leave a comment for me. Um, you can grab my other patterns from my website, which is countrycowdesigns.com. And thank you so much for supporting my little business and my venture into pattern writing. It's been a really fun couple of years. Um, if you've got any suggestions or anything for how I can improve my tutorials, just let me know. So thanks guys for watching.